Welcome fall, week two. Today we will discover how artists use organic shapes and lines and use Van Gogh's sunflowers to inspire our own artwork. But first, let's learn about organic shapes. What are organic shapes and lines? Well, boys and girls, we've been learning about all different kinds of lines, wavy lines, bumpy lines, zigzag lines, Organic lines are lines that are free form and just go in all different kinds of directions. A spiral can be an organic line, so can a bumpy line or a wavy line, even a zigzag line. These type of lines, when they connect together, can make organic shapes. Organic shapes are shapes that are created by nature. So a lot of times things that you see outside, like leaves and flowers or seashells, a tree, Organic shapes are different than the next kind of shape family that you probably already know. The second shape family are geometric shapes. Those are the shapes that you already know the names of, like circle, square, triangle, rectangle, oval. Those shapes are made by people. We invented them to help us build things. So can you think about a time when you've used geometric shapes to build something? Like maybe Legos or blocks. We will use geometric shapes on our next project. Here's another painting by Van Gogh. Can you spot all the organic shapes and lines he used? Look at the clouds and how they flow in different directions. That is an organic shape. Even the way he made the trees and the mountains, all created by nature using organic lines and shapes. Van Gogh loved sunflowers so much, he spent a lot of time outside studying how sunflowers really looked. And then he practiced painting sunflowers over and over again in his studio. He loved sunflowers so much that he wanted to be known as the painter of sunflowers. He sure is, because even today, a long time later, we still celebrate him and love all of the sunflowers he painted. Here are some examples of student sunflowers. Today, when you make your sunflower, you can pick whether you want to do one big sunflower or a bunch of smaller ones, maybe in a vase or a pot like Van Gogh did. Let's learn about how to draw our sunflowers. All right, boys and girls, we're going to get started now making our organic shape Van Gogh sunflowers. There's lots of ways that you can do this. Van Gogh was famous for doing lots of sunflowers together in a vase. You could certainly do it that way. And I love the way Van Gogh made all of his sunflowers different, kind of looking like they're moody, like going off in all different kind of ways. Some of them look happy, some of them look sad. Just a fun way to think of it. Um, another way that you could make your sunflowers is like I showed you in the slideshow, other students will do one big one right in the middle, and that is certainly a great choice, especially for my kindergarten friends. So I'm going to show you both ways to do it. If I was going to do one big sunflower in the middle, I would start using um, my white paper that has no lines on it and a black crayon to draw with. Black crayons, like I've told you before, are really, really great drawing tools. You can start with a pencil, but the black crayon is good too. Doing a really big circle in the middle, just like this, boys and girls. Going around and around and around. And remember, it's an organic sunflower, so it doesn't have to look like a perfect circle because it's not a geometric shape that we're going to be drawing today. We're doing organic shapes. And then Van Gogh loved to use all different kinds of lines to make his organic shapes. And that's kind of what made his sunflowers look really special and unique. And so you could use a zigzag line like I've done here to make your sunflowers like that. Or you could use wavy lines or bumpy lines too 
All of those are really great choices. I'm going to start off with making a zigzag line, and instead of making my zigzags perfect, I'm going to make my zigzags kind of wavy like this. But they're nice and big, and they go off in different directions. You want them to be almost touching the edge of your paper and curvy and crazy and wild zigzags. Doesn't that look like an organic shape? Because it has movement to it. It looks like something you would see in nature. So if you're going to do one big sunflower, you could do it like that. And I could go back in and even add some more organic shape petals between it to fill in my spaces. Ooh, that looks like fun. Almost looks like a sunflower on fire. After I do all of my petals and I fill up my space almost to the edge of the paper, I'm going to choose to do mine with a stem going down from the middle. So two parallel lines kind of looks like a road to make your stem. And then go ahead and add two organic shape leaves. One curved line facing one way, another curved line facing into the other one makes a leaf shape. Now if you can't make your leaves like that, that is totally fine. You can make your leaves any way that you know how. I'm using diagonal lines for the veins in my leaf. Now I'm just going to add some detail using my black crayon. I'm going to put some seeds in the middle. Now you know that sunflowers have lots of seeds. I could use black dots for seeds. I could even add a spiral line for seeds. I could do circles for seeds. I could make a pattern really using my imagination. Dots and dashes to make my seeds look creative and interesting. I like the way that looks. That looks pretty cool. Now after you get all of your um, outline detail, now we're going to start with markers. So just like we have before when we were doing um, the fishies and our other projects, we're using marker for outlining. So sun sunflowers are usually warm colors like reds and golds and yellows kind of all blended together. Um, I'm going to start off with a dark orange for outlining my petals because I love this color. This is called tiger orange. And tiger orange is a Crayola color that they have in the Crayola kit of markers. It's a little bit darker than your regular orange because it looks like the orange fur on a tiger. And I think it's a good color to use for my sunflowers. Mr. Van Gogh likes to make his sunflowers in warm colors too because he liked the way they looked in nature. So after I outline all of my petals, then I'm going to go ahead and outline my seeds in the center. Oh, I love all of these organic shapes. They're so interesting to look at because they're all unique and different. I'm going to outline my edge using a brown marker. I lost my Crayola brown marker, so I have to use my other one. And then I can even use my marker to add more detail to make those seeds. Using dots and dashes, pretending like if I were Van Gogh and I had a paintbrush and I wanted to add lots of lines in the middle for detail. All right, so. Before we color in with crayon, take your time and choose a couple different colors of marker to give yourself a little bit more detail before we color everything in. So I kind of really like the way that looks. I'm going to do the same thing on my petals, just add a few lines. This helps make our sunflower look even more creative. Now remember, your sunflower is not going to look just like mine. You might choose to use different colors. You might choose to use different organic lines in yours. You might choose to make several sunflowers together in a vase like Mr. Van Gogh did. 
That looks pretty creative. Okay, now let's see. We have to think about the stem. Same thing. I'm going to outline the stem. Just to give it some detail, I kind of outlined mine in like an olive green color. And I think I'm going to add some dark green just for some detail lines. There you go. I think we're ready to color. So then when you're ready to color, crayons are great to use for this, but also if you have access to watercolor, you can try that too. Um, when I'm coloring with crayons, you know, I like to blend colors. So I'm gonna pick warm colors that I think will go really, really nicely with my sunflower. So I've got yellow and gold and different colors of orange. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with yellow. Remember, we can color right over top of the markers that we just used. Coloring in all that white space nicely, taking the time to fill everything in, and using our imaginations at the same time. So I don't want to use just the yellow by itself. I'm going to try mixing some orange in with the yellow. When you mix crayons together, it looks almost more like paint when you're done. It can really make your artwork look super creative and I love the way it looks when I mix the yellow and the orange together. It gives it that really bright sunflower look. When you're done coloring in all of your petals, go ahead and color in the middle. I'm gonna use a little bit of this copper brown to color in some of my seed shapes right here. Maybe shade in my spiral, and then maybe I'll use a darker brown to color the background. And it's gonna look kind of like a spirally chocolate chip cookie. That makes me think of food that I wanna eat. Ooh, that looks fun, I like that. And then, do the same thing with your stem. Take some time, color in your stem really nicely, and don't forget about the background, boys and girls. That's all of the space around your sunflower. One of the things that artists know is that when you really take your time on your artwork and color in the background space, you can make some of your own masterpieces. So everything will look really finished. Now you could color it in like a sky if you wanted to, if the sunflower was outside, but you could also get creative and just think about, oh, what if I just added some spirals or lines like we did before with our fishy, like this. This is just sometimes a really fun way to finish off a background using your imagination. and then take some time to color in the spaces. I'm gonna use a little bit of a tealy blue to color in carefully in all those spaces around my sunflower using my kindergarten best or my first grade best art skills. That's how you really get good at drawing is by practicing. So we don't wanna rush this part. And when you're done, you can show everybody in your family and they are gonna be so surprised at your Van Gogh masterpiece that you just made with the awesome sunflowers. Now, if you're up for a challenge and you wanna do multiple sunflowers in a vase, instead of doing one big one in the middle, you can do several different kinds smaller closer together and then attach a vase shape at the bottom and remember to draw the stems down to the vase. I made a couple examples, like this one right here, really simple, easy to do, especially for my first grade friends, and that can give you more of a challenge in trying to make multiple sunflowers. So boys and girls, I hope you have a lot of fun doing this. I can't wait to see all your examples, and we're having a great time celebrating fall. See you later, bye-bye.